Yes, hello everyone. My name is Tim van de Gehuchte, and I'm indeed the sales and marketing manager at Mirrens Natural. Mirrens Natural is actually a Belgian uh, third generation family owned company that's located in the vicinity of, of Liège. And um, we produce actually uh, a range of organic and conventional natural cereal extracts and plant based proteins. As we already talked about a little bit before, we all know that the type of food we eat uh, impacts our health. Sometimes it's really difficult, you know, to put numbers on that, but we know that when, you know, we eat unhealthy foods or have poor diet habits, that they are related to a number and a, a vast number of diseases we can develop. Malnutrition, cardiovascular disease, uh, just to name a few, uh, obesitas, so these are all linked to unhealthy foods. And while we are looking for uh, cures uh, or answers to solve these problems, that's what we often do. We look for cures. So, and we focus maybe too little on, on uh, prevention. And in looking for these answers, I think one of the, the, the solutions that we often overlook is actually the power of natural processing. Now, natural processing is processing, and we need processing to extend shelf life, to get rid of some really nasty bacteria that can be in food, to get rid of mycotoxins. So we need processing, but we can do it in a more natural way. And what is natural processing? Well, for us, it's really that we transform a raw material into an ingredient, but that we respect the initial uh, organoleptic or physical chemical properties of the raw material as much as possible, that we re try to retain the nutritional value of that product. And that actually at Mirren's has become, Mirren's Natural has become our mission statement. It's contributing to a healthier diet by naturally processing raw materials so that they still contain their original nutritional value, taste and color. And a little side effect of that, besides health, is of course that when you do the natural processing, since it still retains color, taste, and so forth, is that one ingredient becomes much more, has much more functionalities than if you would process it maybe in a different way. We've been doing this for quite a long time. We were founded in 1935 where, and if there are any Belgians uh, amongst us, they will for sure know this, where we made the sirop de Liège. So it's a very famous Belgian jam uh, that when you are very little, or when you're an adult, you can put on your slices of bread just in the morning before you go to school, uh, or at least I did. It was actually our first natural process because we actually just naturally processed pears and apples and sometimes dates because you have a little bit of everything in the sirop de Liège. Um, into, into a jam. We did that for a long time, and then in the late 80s, I think, the beginning of the 90s, um, we got an inquiry from the Netherlands, and somebody was looking for an organic cereal extract to make the very famous Stroop waffles. Um, so we, we took on that challenge, and we succeeded in 1994, where we launched our first uh, organic uh, range, and we managed to make um, an organic uh, maize malt uh, extract that can go in there. So, and this, now you also know that there is a little bit of Belgian know-how <laughs> in the Dutch delicacy. And then, you know, we continued to grow on that and it was quite visionary because in 1994, organic extracts naturally processed was really a niche of a niche. But we really believed in that, we continued to grow in that Demand kept on growing. In 2010, we decided to actually also uh, use this process to treat uh, conventional natural raw materials, so not necessarily organic because of the demand. Fast forward to 2017, we had to construct a second factory. We doubled production capacity. And uh, yeah, today we have two factories. We employ around 80 people. Um, and we export our products all over the world. But we didn't stop there, because you know, with any process, you are creating a side stream. You are creating co-products. 
And if I take, for example, one of our products, which is an oat base that can be used uh, to make uh, oat drinks, one of the side processes we get in that is very rich in protein and fiber. And that was used to, we used to send that off into the feed industry. It was a waste. So we went on a quest to look for how can we take this product and make it into a new, fully nutritious ingredient again. And eventually, you know, that quest by repurposing our existing technology and equipment uh, led us to uh, the launch of our uh, ingredient, uh, oat protein concentrate. And we were the first ones in the world to launch organic oat protein concentrate. And it's a mixture of protein, fiber, lipids, and a little bit of carbohydrates. I mean, most of you also know a more fancy term up for that. It's called upcycling. So it's very important for us. And we can do that with any of our raw materials uh, that we treat. Of course, uh, you know, our efforts didn't go unnoticed. Um, last year, because of our mission, our vision, our growth, uh, and our innovation, uh, Ernst Young decided to name us Entrepreneur of the Year for the French-speaking part of Belgium, I have to say that, <laughs> because there are two. Uh, there's one for the, for the north and one for the south. Um, and we were very, I mean, very happy with that, and we continue on that, on that path. So it's also for us not always, you know, what is the market demanding, not being reactive, but also propose. What can we do better? In conclusion, I would just like to leave you, you know, with three short messages. One, natural food processing can play a vital role in promoting health. And I think, you know, if we all try, we can just do it a little bit more natural. Secondly, upcycling presents an opportunity to minimize the food waste that we as food ingredients producers make, because you know, on average, we waste 30% of the food that we produce, and maximize you know, the resources that we use and promote sustainable practices. It's a very important point because it also encourages innovation in the food industry and it pushes us beyond our boundaries. And third one, and a very important one, I would say is SMEs, so small medium enterprises, are key in the food industry. We innovate, we have agility, um, and that is actually what the food industry needs to get to new products, new concepts. We are often also the key driver behind new processes, new technologies, and I think that is something we need ar um, around the whole food supply chain. So that was my little star talk, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Tim.